what's in a car dealer's retail price, and what's the double dip offense. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. It's time for you to buckle up for another edition of the homework guy show. Let me tell you something, friends. No show I've ever produced had me more excited or given me greater satisfaction to present to our audience than this one. I totally understand it, Kevin, because just like you, I hear daily from frustrated car buyers being ripped off, first by a car dealer's already high retail asking price, and then second, by the dealer double dipping on excessive fees. Fees which now have the distinction of being known by the FTC as junk fees. Let's start by explaining what it is that justifies a much higher dealer retail price in the first place because there's generally a pretty big price difference between what a dealer charges for a car versus a car you could buy from any private party seller if they happen to have the same car for sale. Totally. So let's take a minute and look at the list of things the dealer does for the car buyer that a private party seller does not. Number one, a dealer does the legal paperwork for you, sending in a title transfer request to the state on your behalf and applying for the license plates for your vehicle. Yeah. Instead of you filling out and submitting all the paperwork, the dealership does it for you, and that's covered in the retail price you're paying. You do get charged an untaxed title and license fee from your state as a result. Number two, a dealer preps the vehicle for retail sale by inspecting it, reconditioning it, and detailing the car to make it look as nice as possible. And number three, after the inspection, if there are repairs needed, the dealer brings the vehicle up to a minimum standard of operation and safety and in most states must provide a minimum warranty on the vehicle unless your state allows a as-is designation and you buy it that way. Right. Only then, if you happen to drive off the dealership lot and your car falls into two pieces, you're the proud owner of both pieces. <laughs> we don't recommend buying an as-is vehicle. The amount of needed repairs that any vehicle on a lot has doesn't matter because the dealer paid far less for it in the first place or is just very grossly incompetent. These things are largely true with either new or used vehicles, and it's the very reason you should never be paying fees that the dealer explains are designed to cover those expenses. When it comes to used vehicles, dealers must also abide by the used car rule found on the FTC website and defied in 16 CFR Part 455. The used car rule, formerly known as the Used Motor Vehicle Trade Regulation Rule, has been in effect since 1985. It requires car dealers to display a window sticker known as a buyer's guide on the used cars they offer for sale. The buyer's guide discloses whether the dealer offers a warranty, and if so, its terms and conditions, including the duration of the coverage, the percentage of total repair costs the dealer will pay, and which vehicle systems the warranty covers. In states that do not permit sales of used cars as is or without any warranty, dealers must display an alternative version of the buyer's guide. Here's the double dip offense I was referring to earlier, my friends, and the light bulb will go off in your head if you fully understood what reasonably is included in a car dealer's retail price. Back in just a moment after this short message from our very own Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? It's going to take some of you by surprise to learn that most of the fees a dealer commonly charges car buyers for, including the ever popular dealer document fee, is already reasonably assumed to be covered in a dealer's retail price. That was just one of the things we covered under the definition of dealer retail price. You might not be sure, but think about it. If the dealer doesn't already do these things for you without an extra fee, why would you ever pay a dealer a retail price for a car in the first place, instead of the same price as a private party seller? Doesn't make a lick of sense, does it? It certainly doesn't. No. Now, let's step back for a moment and explain why we know dealer charge fees are junk fees and why we know they are not legal for dealers to charge. This is an exact quote taken out of the FTC regulations in section 463.4a, which states, the offering price of a vehicle means the full cash price for which a dealer will sell or finance the motor vehicle to any consumer, excluding only required government charges. The key words that you heard there are offering price is the full cash price and excluding only required government charges. For the benefit of our audience, a government charge is a fee collected by the dealer but paid to your state. The most common government fees are title and licensing fees. We've covered this recently in the video titled Junk Fees as Defined by the FTC. It's time to bust car dealers. At your convenience, go check it out. 
Sales tax is typically collected by the dealer and paid to the state. As stated in FTC regulations, these are the only required fees to be paid at the time of the sale and they are not taxable. By that standard, Liz, is a document fee required government charges? Clearly not. A dock fee goes into the dealer's pocket and is taxable. So what about a reconditioning fee? Is that a required government fee? Definitely not. That fee also goes into a dealer's pocket and is taxable. Right after the exact quote Liz read from the FTC regulations, it goes on to say why full cash price excluding only required government charges is so important. It reads, this provision would prohibit deceptive and unfair practices with respect to price and add-ons. The price is one of the most material pieces of information for a consumer in making an informed purchasing decision. Yet, yep. it is difficult for consumers to uncover the actual price for which a dealer will sell an advertised vehicle until visiting the dealership and spending hours on the lot, end quote. Yep. Don't all of you make buying decisions and decide on a dealer based on price? Oh, everyone does. You, the car buyer, rely upon pricing information being transparent and honest. You quite often spend hours on the lot and you get pushed and pulled many different directions with what is largely made up stories and lies, which are told for the purpose of influencing you into making a bad decision. So why are you there in the first place? Because the price of the car brought you in. Price influenced you. As the FTC confirms, price is one of the most material pieces of information for a consumer in making an informed purchasing decision. You decided on this dealer based on the advertised price, only to have the dealer start adding everything under the sun to it known as non-negotiable fees and add-ons, all of which is a violation of law. As a bonus today, we are also covering what to do when dealers refuse to give you a written price response to your email for an out-the-door price. Because a number of you report that dealers fail to get back to you, what you don't know is that the dealer is legally required to respond. This refusal is grounds for an FTC complaint because the language says, this provision would further require that upon receipt of a customer inquiry about a specific vehicle or price or financing term for any vehicle, the dealer must disclose the offering price of that vehicle and that if any part of such inquiry or response is made in writing, like as in your email, the offering price must be disclosed in writing as well. You see, it's not a simple recommendation being made by the FTC. It says must. must. Follow up your first email, the second email that says, you have failed to respond to my clear written request for vehicle pricing. You are required by law to respond to my written request for pricing with a price that is also in writing. Failure to do so leaves your dealership begging to be a target for an FTC complaint. And for dealers who tell you that their fees and add-ons are not optional, the FTC regulations in section 463.4C clearly state, requires dealers to disclose that the optional add-on product or service is not required and that a consumer can purchase or lease the vehicle without the add-on. Not required. Not required. Okay, now a quick recap or reminder of what's included in a dealer's retail price. Number one, sending in a request to the state for title transfer and applying for the license plates for your vehicle. Instead of you filling out and submitting all the paperwork yourself, the dealership will do it for you. If that sounds an awful lot like a document fee or an e-filing fee, it sure is. Don't let the dealer double dip on you by charging you a document fee. Number two, the dealer preps the vehicle for retail sale by inspecting it, reconditioning, and detailing the car. If that sounds a lot like something as a reconditioning fee, it certainly is. Yep. Don't let the dealer double dip on you by charging you a reconditioning fee as well. And number three, after the inspection, the dealer brings the vehicle up to a minimum standard of operation and safety. All of these things the FTC says a buyer would reasonably expect to be included in the price of the car. Do not let them double dip on you by charging you a fee for these services too. I'd like to take a moment to alert our newest viewers that you can also check us out on Facebook. Please drop by, leave us a comment on a post and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website too, thehomeworkguy.com. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the car buying process without getting ripped off. It's loaded up with free resources for car buying viewers, and we now offer a blog post there too for those of you who prefer to read. If you wish to show us some love with a tip, there's a super thanks button now, and there are links for tips in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the read more button down below. All right, if you're new here to the Homework Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. <laughs>